Oh, I don't dare press F5. <laughs> All right. So I'll just go through it really quickly here. So spare one is equal to delay, or the the place where we set those uh, digitized values earlier. And these are all integers. Spare two equals spare one plus 1500 uh, milliseconds, basically. Uh, plus this one here is just uh, uh, it's just adding a random number to it, and that's just so we can see a bit of a uh, bit of jitter in the signal. And then I sort of get rid of a bit of that jitter using this smooth function we have. Now this was just uh, also copied from the uh, one of the SciPy recipes they have. So I'll go into those later. And then spare four does a really complex expression, but I won't even show that because it doesn't really add much. So if we run the job, it comes up pretty quickly. We see a, a stack section here, and you don't see anything different. But now I go to overlay trace headers, and we want to plot three headers, uh, three different colors. So now we see uh, the three headers. The red one is the seafloor that we picked earlier, that I prepared earlier. Uh, the second one, the purple one, is that one that has all the jitter I mentioned earlier. And then the blue one has uh, is just a smooth version of that. So if we zoom up on it, you can see, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite nicely smooth there. So that's just a, a quick example of header math in action. Uh, yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to ask before you forget. So I'll go on to another job here. Uh, yeah, so let's read some images in. This isn't something you would normally do in a, in a job, but uh, you know, I thought it was interesting. It shows how to uh, read and write <coughs> images and how to manipulate arrays and pseudo traces. So what we're doing is using SinWave to just create basically a blank array in Claritas. Uh, if you look here, it's just uh, 400 samples by uh, 1280, not 400, uh, 799 trace length, with which equates to 800 samples. And they're just basically zeros in terms of amplitude. We use new header to create three new uh, what we call pseudo traces. So these are just like the, uh, the trace array, except that they're, they're stored in the trace headers. So they're not integers, they're arrays of floating point numbers, the same size as the trace array. It, it's a bit confusing, but once you work with it, you sort of you understand what the, the concept is. Then we're using this run Python function called replace seismic to load uh, load some some just PNG images into the uh, the seismic data. And so I'll run this. I'll show you the uh, the script in a minute. So the first one here you can see is actually the web page from Globe Claritas. Uh, on the bottom we have trace PT one, two, and three. Uh, those PT things are pseudo traces. So if we go to PT1 and change the uh, display, <laughs> yeah, here's a funny, funny picture I, I found on a, one of my favorite websites. So not really the kind of bike you'd want to ride for very long. But uh, yeah, so this is just loaded up. This is actually a color PNG image. And the script has converted it to grayscale and loaded it uh, in this pseudo trace header. There's a couple other ones. Uh, this one's Fantastic. The bikers here will, uh, will understand that. <laughs> Nasty. Oh. Anyway, so uh, let's go to the script that, that loaded that. So it's uh, re read image.py, and the function is called replace seismic. So if I just go through this really quick, it, uh, it only works on, on seismic data. So it skips anything that's, uh, well, anyway, I won't go into that. It's not important. So image array one equals read seismic, or sorry, read image of screenshot.png. And then it says seismic.tr data, which is basically saying uh, convert all the, all the data in that array to the values from this array. And it's doing the same things here with uh, pseudo trace one, two, and three. And again, just reading, reading from other images. So you can see this is, you know, what, maybe 10 or 15 lines of code, and it's doing something that, uh, say, in C or Fortran would be significantly more code. I'll just get out of there. Yeah, sure. 
Okay, so we covered reading images. Well, how about writing images and figures, things like this? Uh, this job here uh, reads a stack section. I think it's the, the same one as before. Uh, puts an AGC on it and then uses this run Python function called save image to save out uh, three different formats. Uh, here we're doing PDF, PNG, and SVG. Uh, there's a lot of acronyms there, but I'm sure everyone knows about PDF. PNG is like a JPEG, except it doesn't have artifacts in it. It's uh, just a very good uh, image format. And SVG is one of these newer formats for uh, vector graphics. So it works over the web. Uh, it's all XML based, so it's good for things like importing into Adobe Illustrator, uh, all sorts of things. So I'll just run this thing here, and it'll actually display on the screen as well. So it just takes a second to load up. All right, there we go. And so you can see it's you know your typical sort of plot of seismic section, except in this case I've overlaid the velocity model, which was saved in one of these pseudo traces. I've overlaid that on top of the seismic section, which is a grayscale, and using transparency to sort of merge the, the two together. And just use the sort of typical values for, you know, the, the axes and added a few labels and, and the title. And so if we zoom up here, we can see it's uh, whoop, takes a bit. You can see it's a reasonably high quality image here. Yeah. And at the same time, I'll just uh, bring up a file browser here. Come on. Okay. Source, Python talk, at the bottom. So here's the PDF uh, result of that. So I know from my time as a, as a researcher that uh, getting high quality uh, figures is a pretty important thing and you don't want to just use JPEGs and you don't want to lose the text in your figures, things like this. So we can see here that, that this is real text and it did a good job uh, keeping that transparency and yeah, just just a good figure. Uh, PNG is much the same, basically just an image. Uh, the SVG will open with Inkscape. So Inkscape is just one of these uh, SVG editors, basically. And you can see the, uh, the same exact thing. And it uh, yeah, it looks quite good, I would say. It's probably enough on that one. Moving on to, let's see here, One, two, three. There's something called MLab in Python. This is sort of generic uh, 3D visualization uh, that you have in Python. It's a, you can think of it as a, a component of an application called Myavi 2. Uh, the whole point of this is that it's quite easy to use. If we look at the, the source code here, it's, it's just right there. Uh, this is actually one of the demos from their, their site. So it's creating uh, several arrays just of synthetic data and then using these, these things here like MLAB, the pipeline, that image plane widget to do various, various things in 3D. I won't go through the code too much, but I'll just show you on screen what this thing does. It takes a few seconds to, to load up. few more seconds. There we go. So in the back 